Welcome to the second episode of Season 3 of the Ubuntu UK Podcast. It's Monday the 1st of March 2010, and in this episode we're going to talk about the new Ubuntu One Music Store and interview lead developer and friend of the show, Stuart Language. We'll discuss today's announcement from Canonical, although we're recording on Monday, so it's Wednesday's announcement, which will be today when you listen to this. Mm. Well, it might be yesterday. The DeLorean is in the car park. Yes. <laughs> And we'll, of course, cover the latest news, events, a bit about Ubuntu, and feedback. I'm Alan, and with me this week is everyone. Hello, Tony. Hello. Does that mean we found enough microphones? Yes. Finally, five And stands, ones. and cables. And five people. What have you been doing, Tony? Um, I've been helping my cousin use Ubuntu. He's, uh, uh, he's used computers for years, and is a bit of an IT, he's an IT company. And uh, for whatever reason, he suddenly decided to try Ubuntu after years of pestering at Christmases. And uh, did you do you send him Christmas cards or Ubuntu CDs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak to him. That's maybe why he tried to uh, use Ubuntu. Um, yeah, no, it's great. So having come r- come around from the dark side a bit, um, he's uh, given it a go, and he absolutely loves it. Um, Excellent. Of course. And why wouldn't he? Well, absolutely. He had a DVB thing, and uh, well, I wasn't sure it was just going to work, but he plugged it in, and a thing came saying, you need to install the firmware, click here to install the firmware, and wow. it did. And a couple of other bits and bobs, which sort of helped him through, and uh, it was all good. And, and he's, it just worked. And it just worked. He's setting Brilliant. up network mounts and all sorts. Yay. Wow. That's really good. Yeah. A uh, good news story. Yes. How about you, Laura? What have you been up to? And uh, hello. Hello. Um, getting caught out by the Twitter fish, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh. Can so you actually shiny. explain how that happened? Because I don't actually know. Uh, it sends you a DM. And then if you click the link, it takes you to a Twitter login page. But it's not the real Twitter login page. Uh, but it looks like it. Dope. The trouble is that on a phone, you can't see the URL. Yeah. <laughs> and the, oh, whatever other clues you might see on a PC just don't happen to be there on a URL. And the original message was plausible from the person it came from. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so even today I got into work and I was still getting people emailing me internally <laughs> saying I'd just sent them a weird DM and would I change my password? <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> to be goodness. fair, by the time we saw it in Firefox, it said, this is a phishing scam and big red yeah. things went off. But obviously, as you say, not on our phone. It's mm. quite an interesting kind of attack mm. vector, yeah, that, isn't a, it? Yeah. Nice Maybe we should all have Firefox on our phones. <laughs> I don't know. My phone's slow enough. <laughs> 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 Hello, Dave. How are you? I'm okay. I'm I'm a little bit on the tired side, to be fair, but uh, I'm that. I'm okay. What have you been up to? Uh, I've actually just got back from uh, being at Canonical in London at the, at the Millbank Ooh. Towers. It's yeah. pretty there, isn't it? Oh, the the, the view yeah, yeah. is amazing, and I imagine that majority of the employees do not appreciate the view they've got there. It's, it's really. Giving... So, certainly, the employees who work on Chris Jones's side of the building, because <laughs> they look out because he the... blocks out all the light. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's, he's on the wrong side. So all he gets to see is a power station. No, right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, on, oh, anyway, you you see all the sites from there. It's wonderful. And we'll talk more about what you talked about there later. Yes, yes, I think we will. It's um, it should be interesting. Cool, Simon. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm tired. Oh. Mad week at work, even though it's Monday, mental day. <laughs> Mad week, you've done I'm a full week in one day. <laughs> yeah, feels like it. Gosh, you're busy. <laughs> what have you been doing? Um, I've been playing with Lucid, actually. I downloaded Lucid. Uh, in fact, we talked about how the hell I was going to keep my setup, because I've got a brand new laptop. Just got it nice and sweet and thought I'd do a reinstall. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is working perfectly because now I'm going to completely mess well, it up. There you go. It was just working, so I wanted to do something new. Um, so I downloaded uh, Lucid, Lucid 64 bit. And then we spoke about how on earth do you keep your home but do a in- new install, which I didn't realize you could do. Uh, and you can. You just install. As you get to the partitioning bit, there's a tick that you untick and allows you to uh, install and, and keep your home. So I kept everything and I got a brand new install. Oh, and you moved from 32 to 64 bit yeah. along the way. Yep. Cool. And, uh, it's working it's, all right? Yeah, there's the odd sort of little thing, but nothing catastrophic. Nothing's really properly crashed and... and you know, left itself unusable. So is, is the odd, odd little thing by any chance flash? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Go on then, Mr. Pope. What about you? What have you been up to? Um, I've just got to check my pay thing to see what I've done. Oh, yeah, I've been blogging a lot. A lot? Yeah, a huge amount? Noticed. Yeah, you've, really? been, you've been, like, 
Lucasade or you something. You should sorry. You should um, take a, a leaf out of his book, mate. Well, Dave, 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 blog, Dave you, blogs Dave. loads, but they're all in his drafts. Actually, yeah, I, I, do, I do have about forty drafts. But yeah, I mean, what, you've what's, got forty what's... drafts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, what, what's been like your motivation there? Because you've had like more than one a day, haven't you? It's because I've been um, trying to help my mum set up a PC, uh, my mum Ubuntu thing. So a lot of the posts have been related to that, to setting up a computer for my mum. So. Um, yeah, if you want to see the posts, then they're quite lengthy, and yeah. I would I would completely understand if you don't want to read yeah. them. <laughs> too long, did not read. Yeah. 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 Too much. Um, I will summarise them at some point in the future with oh, another immensely long post, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't really a summary. So, should we um, should we get on with it? Yeah, sounds like a fun packed show with a mouthful of cake. <laughs> <laughs> This week we've seen some uh, interesting developments in the uh, in the Lucid version, where we've got uh, in Rhythmbox we've got the Ubuntu Music Store. Ooh. Now we've talked about this a little bit before, but um, now we've seen some sneak peeks of what it can do and, and things like that. We thought we would speak to Stuart Langridge. Stuart's on the line now. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Hello, you PC guys. How's it going? <laughs> Hello. How's how's your podcast? Oh, well, you know, we, we go from strength to strength, as I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be shotofjack.org. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yes. So um, we've, um, we've spoken to you before about the, the store, and we, we talked to you, um, I think it was at UDS, maybe. Yes, and, um, it was. Uh, and you told us what the plans were for it, and now some of us have actually seen it. So um, tell us what the state of play is right now. What, what state is the store in? Right now, at the moment, the uh, Ubuntu One Music Store is in beta test. I have a small but elite team of beta testers <laughs> who yes, are <laughs> thrashing out the the more serious bugs in the process before we open it up to everyone in the world. When you say small, how small? Well, the reason that we're in beta test rather than opening up to everybody, I appreciate that uh, Lucid, the 1004 release, is in alpha anyway, but... Because the music store uh, involves you spending money and then getting music, <laughs> right? I don't really want to open it up to a wide beta test if people are going to be spending money and they're not getting music. Right. So, so, and and uh, has that happened for any of the beta testers? No. <laughs> 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 um, well, the, part of the reason um, that I picked the small but elite group of beta testers that I did was because... I knew there were people where I could say, if it decides not to give you a song that you've paid for, come and talk to me and I'll sort it out. <laughs> so it's just thrashing out the the details of the process by which, you know, the money gets all the way to the far end and then the song comes all the way back to you. And that's what we've been working on as part of the beta test over the last week. And we are nearly at the end of that period. I think we've um, got most of those those issues out there are still going to be lots of bugs as i say lucid is in alpha and anyone who doesn't want to, to run software with bugs in should not be running a pre-release version of ubuntu but we are very nearly now out of the position where we can say okay fine we'll open it up to people who are using lucid alpha 3 so when will people be able to get involved in the beta phase uh yes i would say so um hopefully we should have something released before beta one. Oh right, okay. And the music we found out this week is being provided by Seven Digital, is that it right? Is. Yes, correct. Seven Digital are the um we we went looking uh for a commercial partner, as you can imagine, um Canonical isn't in the business of going to individual bands and record labels and licensing music off them so we wanted a commercial partner to do that side of the business do you mean they didn't just uh, send you down to hmv with a bunch of record tokens uh, they did not rather disappointingly i was kind of hoping they'd just deliver a carton full of record tokens to my house can you buy <laughs> record tokens <laughs> do they even exist anymore um but uh we went looking at the um different people and settled on seven digital now one of the things that um a few of us poking around on the site uh, discovered was that we could find an Ubuntu branded seven digital store by going to the, you know a certain URL, and um, yeah, I posted a few screenshots on my blog, and a few other people looked at it, and it was all very interesting. But um, that's not how people are going to use it, is it? No, um, the stores to be used in Rhythmbox at the moment. And Rhythmbox is the only player. Um, Rhythmbox is the only player that we're building the thing for. That we 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 very carefully built 
um, the stuff that runs the store in two separate halves. The bulk of the work is done in, so I have to be a bit technical here, so non-developer people prepare to be bored. Um, the bulk <laughs> of the store is basically a GTK widget, and that does all of the stuff to do with actually uh, choosing uh, which music you want to buy, uh, paying for it, all that kind of thing. Um, and then the bit that puts that into Rhythmbox takes care of hooking that up to specifically Rhythmbox things, like making sure the music shows up in your Rhythmbox library, making sure that when you preview a song, it plays through Rhythmbox. And one of the big reasons we wrote it like that is precisely so it can be embedded in other players. And who, so would, who would do that? It to, um, for instance, make it available in Banshee, they'd only have to write... They don't have to redo the rhythm box bit of the plugin, which is quite small, rather than all the rest of it. And who would you expect would do that? Would that be something Canonical would do, or is this going to be something you would expect the community to do? We're not. We're certainly not doing it for Lucid. Okay. Um, I we are, our primary goal is to support the uh, default Ubuntu install, and the default Ubuntu music player is Rhythmbox. It comes up. It's come up for discussion with the last couple of UDSs. Um, if the default. Uh, music player in Ubuntu was Banshee, we've done Banshee. But um, our primary goal is to give people what they'll have out of the box on the desktop, and that's rhythm box. So while still staying on the geeky line there, um, at the moment it's my understanding that um, you're embedding a website essentially into the application, and, and that that's and you're, you're, you're working with that. Um, do you think there'll become a time when you'll be able to extract it right down to have like uh, to be able to search and buy musics via um, like a Python function or something, you know, so you have a full API to access it. It's certainly possible. <laughs> um, far be it from me to comment on what I'll be working on a year from now. <laughs> but, um, do- doing that kind of thing is certainly technically doable it'd be quite a lot of work but uh it would potentially be doable if that was the direction we decided to go in one of the um questions that's come up a lot is um the fact that the music that's downloaded is in mp3 format and we don't play mp3s out of the box because we don't have the codec because we can't ship the codec and so we auto install or you know partial half manual half auto install this codec to let it happen and that seems to have generated a lot of comment that we should be delivering music in Org or Flack or some other more open, more free, less, you know, evil, whatever you want to call it. Um, how do you think you're going to be able to um, re- respond to those criticisms? Well, realistically, um, we are not currently in a position to go to record labels who decide on this kind of thing and say can you please provide the music in org format, in org vorbis or in flac? They provide it as MP3 and that's all they do. Now there's a case to be made that the fact that it's an MP3, which means we can actually play it on Ubuntu, mm. is something of a victory by comparison with the DRM encoded Windows media formats that it all used to be in. Um, certainly if the record labels decide to change their mind and, and do things in Og Vorbis, that would be absolutely brilliant from our perspective, and we'd love to see that. And I, I personally am of the opinion that one good way to provide that pressure is to say, look, look at how successful the Ubuntu our music store has been. And then we get a louder voice mm. uh, in making that case to record labels. I've, I've seen that, that argument put and the counter-argument being... Um so we have to give them a load of money, you know, we have, we have to show we're good for it. And, that, and I think a lot of people are, are kind of unhappy about that, the fact that you have to give them the money first before they'll see that as goodwill and, you know, you can actually petition them. You know, look, we've got all these people who are buying your music. They could still say no. It would be, yeah, they could do, absolutely. It would be great to have OG format, but um, most of the people I know have... Uh, players that play mp3s they're quite happy with mp3s their phones play mp3s they, if they use it as an mp3 player they've got an ipod or something and and so you know in the same way that we're supporting uh ipods in rhythm box because we want people to be able to use the stuff that they've got hmm. um 
giving them songs that they can play by the same token, to me, seems reasonable. Mm. Um, Flying Squirrel on Twitter, it's a cool name, um, says, is Ubuntu One Music Store more about providing a cool service or generating revenue? And are there more revenue-generating services coming? Well, interesting question. Um, from my point of view, it's... Um, uh, it, it's uh, about providing a cool service. That's what I've been working on. You know, I want to make it as cool as possible. Obviously, there is a revenue motive there. One of the things that we'd <laughs> like to do is make some money because then that allows us to do things like fund the Ubuntu One team to do more cool things and fund um, the Ubuntu project as a whole to do more cool things. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a. I don't think it's, it's about one or the other, really. It's... Um, all the things together we want to make something great because yeah. we like making great things and it's got to make business sense yes now it's called the ubuntu one music store does that mean it integrates very closely with the ubuntu one uh, file sharing and distribution system that you've worked on before yes um it does indeed when you buy uh songs they are first um stored in your Ubuntu One cloud storage, and then that automatically comes down to your computer. As, as you know, if you're using mm. Ubuntu One and you've got a file in Ubuntu One, it's then synced down to all of your machines, and that's exactly how the music store works as well. So, so just to clarify, uh, if I buy one song and I've got eight machines registered to, to a Ubuntu One account, it would download that song to all eight machines? Yep. Oh, that's pretty nifty. And you don't download it on the, the one you're sat at at the time? You don't download the music to that one first, and then it goes up to the cloud and then out to the other seven machines? Correct. It goes it, straight... It, it goes into the cloud first and then down. What was the reason for engineering it that way around? Um, there's a number of um, weird technical licensing reasons um, around how we can deliver music to people in the context of an open-source application on people's desktops. Um, and it's also um, a, a big part of it is that we think it's a really useful way of doing it. So you've automatically got the music. It's uh, You can imagine a future in which this is useful on things like mobile devices, where it just downloads to the cloud and doesn't actually download to your machine, to your phone immediately. So you can just play things as and when you want them, or you can buy stuff from one machine and have it appear on others. Would it also be true, though, that given you only get two gig free, well, only, you get a whole two gig free, and I'm a beta tester, and I've already clocked up 764 meg of my uh, Ubuntu One storage just through buying music. That's a lot of Britney. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know she'd made that many tracks, did you? Because uh, I honestly didn't know Lady Gaga had done that many songs, but okay, fine, carry on. So, so, so surely part of the motivation is to get users to fill up their Ubuntu One folder so that they then pay for the bigger folder. Well, I mean, I'm not going to deny that's there, but the the motive is not primarily to say, ha, 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 the more music people buy, the more they're, the more they're likely to pay for um, extra storage. It's done that way primarily because we think it's the best way to deliver stuff. But presumably, once you've actually purchased the song and it's coming on your computer, you can then remove it from your Ubuntu One music store and pull it somewhere else on your hard drive. If you wanted to, yes. So, you know, th- th- there's no enforcing you to go over your limit if you buy your whole collection through that. Correct. No, but you lose the ability to sync your music across all your yes. machines. Yep. So, Matt B 90 on Twitter said, uh, what happens to your next music store purchase when your Ubuntu One accounts full up? <laughs> Part of the reason I'm hesitating here is that it's one of the things we're still discussing. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Matt. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that question at the moment. We will have an answer. I'm just not 100% sure what it is yet. <laughs> so you're deliberating about whether to let people go over or or whether to just stop them being able to download or something. Well, you have to yeah, stop them probably. Before that is, <laughs> the discussion is ongoing on that point, exactly what will happen. <laughs> okay, uh, so when this actually hits the wider audience in its stable software... Um, we'll, uh, so if people purchase a song and they do have an issue, either it doesn't work or it's poor quality or, or, or anything, uh, do they actually contact Canonical or do they contact um, uh, Seven Digital if they, you know, to raise a concern? I don't know. <laughs> um, I would like to have a, an answer to that question and we will have an answer. 
um, by the time Lucid is released. But it, at the moment, I don't exactly know. It's certainly not common for people buying music from, say, Amazon to file a bug when something goes wrong. Yes. So I, if our target audience are the kind of, you know, MP3 buying public, you'd expect them to be able to do what you do in the course of any other retail transaction. Contact but, customer service, though. Yeah, customer service. You could just give out your home phone number, Ak, if that's... Well, uh, you could do that, but... <laughs> so, I, should we put... I, 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 I believe I'd rather I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know exactly how that will work. Okay, well, fair enough. Well, I'm sure you can keep us posted, so that's great. Yes, we will. We will have some kind of answer about that. Cool. Um, other music stores are available... And uh, <laughs> you sound like the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are the Radio Four of Linux podcasts. <laughs> Other podcasts are available. <laughs> uh, no, Health, no, 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 they're not. Um, <laughs> um, so, given that other stores are available, and we're um, only providing, I say only is a you know, reserve word. We're we're providing. Hey, we've got this music store, but it is just Seven Digital, and there are lots of other music stores out there. Are we stifling choice? By, which is kind of the backbone of open source and free software, by enforcing one store. We're not enforcing a store. Well, Rhythmbox doesn't have a plug-in for Amazon, and it doesn't have a plug-in for Play or you know whatever other stores. I, I agree. Um, we, uh, the Ubuntu One team, have chosen to deliver an Ubuntu One store, and we think that we're building it uh, in a way that people are going to like. Mm-hmm. There's uh, there, there are already two other stores in Rhythmbox, um, Gemendo and Magnatune, both of whom sell music. Um, uh, Amazon already have a, uh, a downloader thing, don't they? Yeah, it works I, really I, well. I've, I, I've, I've certainly used it in the past. I, presumably there's no reason why they couldn't um, integrate something into Rhythmbox if they wanted to. They just didn't want to provide a really well-integrated experience for Ubuntu. They want to give you a, um, give us a... <laughs> just a separate little application that you had to install separately and doesn't really integrate with the rest of your stuff. Right. And that's fine. That was their decision, you know. Mm. And that's exactly the same thing with the other music stores. Okay. And the last question we've had in through Twitter is from Josh Holland, who says, will the Ubuntu One music store carry severed fifth? (laughs) Um, It... It, it won't do in the initial release because um, those of you who haven't heard of Seventh Fifth, that's John O. Bacon's um, music recording project, and um, as far as I'm aware, he hasn't um, approached anyone about uh, a record deal or <laughs> approached any of the people who do independent music. It's only a matter um, of time, surely. It is surely only a matter of time. <laughs> there, there, there are ways of getting your band's music into the Ubuntu One music store via 7 Digital. We've got oh. um, a note in the uh, in our Frequently Asked Questions list. If you could put up a link to that, that would be rather handy. Yep. Um, uh, there are a couple of um, agencies, independent labels, who it's good to approach if you want to see a way of getting your music into um, the 7 Digital and label catalogues and therefore into the Ubuntu One music store. It's a slightly roundabout approach, but that is a way of doing it. I did actually search for Severed Fifth on the the Ubuntu One music store, and I pointed out on Twitter that um, Severed Fifth isn't in the Ubuntu One music store, and Dave Dave Murphy came back with, well, that's because it's a music store. (laughs) I've heard some of the new stuff Yeah, that is good doing, And it's actually not that bad <laughs> <laughs> Damned by a... faint praise <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I mean I, 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 I'm not um, a massively death metal fan And I you had to live with it But <laughs> does, does the music that you like Is it in the 7 Digital store? Yes okay. um, So far I've not found With the notable exception of ACDC <laughs> who, as far as I can tell, aren't available oh. anywhere. Good. I, it, it, it's not clear to me whether they just don't like the idea of their music being downloadable or whether it's their record label or what, but you can't see to buy ACDC music anywhere at all. Mm. Um, but every I, I've now been testing the store for only about two or three days longer than my beta test team has. <laughs> and uh, I've bought 40 or 50 songs, I think. And every time I've thought of a song, I've just gone and bought it, and it's been there. Cool. That's good. Okay, so you, I mean, I've probably got pretty mainstream boring music tastes, you know. <laughs> but 
Okay, so uh, if people have got further um, questions, um, some of them might be answered in uh, FAQ you mentioned earlier. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put um, the link up. We've yeah. deliberately tried to put that together so it covers most of the uh, questions that people have asked. We've been paying attention to... Uh, there, there, there's been quite a lot of uh, blogosphere excitement, use the dread word, um, about the music store with screenshots led by your yeah. very own Alan Pope. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Sorry about um, that. we've been paying uh, attention to uh, posts on different websites and the comments that people are leaving and trying to pull a consistent set of questions out of those that we can then answer through, through things like the fact. Well, I think it's fair to say that Ubuntu One Music Store is um, unique in Linux distros. It's the first time something like this has been tried. It's really exciting, and I'm sure there are lots and lots of people who are keen to give it a go when Lucid Beta comes out and they can finally have a crack at it. Mm. I hope so. I, I, I really think that um, it's something that will, well, hopefully at least, appeal to our mass of real people who are out there thinking... <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to all those you other know, non-real people. people. People like us, realistically, we have different needs to um, most users of Ubuntu. Um, people, uh, My dad, for example, is thoroughly excited about the idea of a music store so he can go and buy Billy Fury records. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Again. Um, so, <laughs> Well, yeah, I did point out to him that he bought all these things on. Uh, he bought the, all these things as forty fives about thirty years ago. He said, "No, no, no, no I, I'd like them now and be able to listen to them on my television." Cool. And and again, um, reaching those people, I think, is really interesting. And one, uh, and one way of doing that is by letting them have the music that they want. Uh, that's a great note to wrap it up on. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us this evening. No problem, and good luck with the podcast. Thank you, <laughs> as ever. Always a pleasure. And um, you do a Mickey Mouse podcast. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> that would be Shot of Jack. Marvellous. Where you are the Bobby Ball to John O'Bacon's Tommy Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> well put. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers, Stuart. mate. Good night. Thanks, Stuart. Cheers. See ya. It's time for the news. Matt Hasse, the new COO, at Canonical has outlined his top priorities and goals in an interview with Robert Gallipolini. In a nutshell, it boils down to enterprise, enterprise, enterprise. Marketing, community, community, growth. He's a big Star Trek fan, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's been taking long lessons from Jono's community, community, community there, I isn't he? I think so, mm-hmm. yes. So what's a coup? Uh, it's the um, chief operating officer. Excellent. So he's the boss. Yeah, he came from. He's not the top boss, though, is he? Because Jane Silbert is now CEO. uh, Yeah, yeah, she's the C. Yeah, so he he makes the. Oh, I don't know, to be honest. (laughs) He's the second boss. You're a director of a company, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) Not one that has a COO, though. (laughs) They're all all Dave. (laughs) Something very long and quite boring has happened in the Fedora project. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't think you were going to leave yes, a comment Yes, I'm in. going to. Oh, okay, well, we'll link to the story. It's just a, a lengthy post about, you know, the... Internal process. Yeah. And, and the directions where they're going wrong, I understand, isn't it? Well, possibly, yeah. And it's worth, you know, reading to learn from that, and maybe we can avoid going in the same direction, perhaps. The Guardian has reported that US-based lobby group, which represents the RIAA and MPAA, has asked the US government to add India, Brazil and Indonesia to a special watch list. The list restricts the ability of countries to trade with the US, and the countries have done nothing more than encourage the use of open source software. This is really quite a scary story. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was about... um, uh, It devalued the uh, principle of proprietary software. That that was one of the main things they were were tugging on. And um, it just seems absolutely wrong, the fact they're trying to put piracy and open source software as the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, and they were quite blatant about the fact that it was because they had been encouraging open source, because the Indonesian government has sent around things saying, please prefer to use open source where you can and stuff. And they were saying it, that it's that. It's, they weren't pretending it was something else and using it as an excuse to about this. And they were saying, you're doing open source, you don't respect our intellectual property, property things. It goes back to the free software is communism thing, basically. But equally, our UK government at the moment has actually said they will encourage open source software. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does that How long is it going to be until we can't watch the latest James Bond or Hulk movie yeah, or whatever we as a result. Do trade with America. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, but we've got a special relationship, so we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they might just put more boring trailers on the front of the videos. <laughs> Version 2.6.33 of the Linux kernel has been released, including major updates to the Nouveau open source NVIDIA driver. 
I do hope one day that that thing's finished. Actually, no, the, the, the major thing about the next Ubuntu release is I actually understand that that driver is, is actually the default rather than the NV driver yeah, for the it. first time. It is, but and it's still not got 3D ready yet. Yeah, but the progress it's made in such a short time oh, yeah, totally. is I mean, fascinating. Do you remember, were you at UDS or was it Tony when we sat in the room where they were talking about, oh no, it was not No, I, I, I didn't get into any of the rooms. So I had to sit in a cupboard with a video camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not UDS, FOSDEM. FOSDEM. It yes, was them, and there was a room when they described the Nouveau project, and it was it was quite amazing. And everyone thought, oh, "Crikey, this is a start of something big." And other people were thinking, "Well, they're never going to get there." And well, here we are with it being a default driver in a major. That's brilliant. Linux distro, it's fantastic. Open source Twitter clone Status.net has started doing commercial support with Motorola and Canonical among the first customers. Mm-hmm. So that's status.net is the Identica thing? Yes. No, it's the Laconica thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Laconica became status.net yeah. for some reason. But it's what drives Identica. Laconica sounds so much better. Yeah, but I think status.net, you know, says my status, is. you know. But, I mean, interesting yeah, um, net. Interesting sites such as Launchpad and, and other sites are actually do have Identica as the main, um, as the main uh, blo- microblogging platform that it links to for its uh, service updates. It's not really surprising given the, the people behind Launchpad are open sourcey people and, and only we, recently and with well. Twitter <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with Twitter uh, <laughs> with Twitter taking up advertising you know, might be more people start, might start to use um, status.net does advertising really ever stop people using a service surely they just block it yeah. Well, the thing is, Google didn't use advertising until it had like a critical mass of people who were, you know, basically. So we'll see that on status.net at some point. <laughs> the government's latest attempt to demonstrate how well they understand digital rights issues will close down Wi Fi hotspots in cafes and coffee shops across the country. The Digital Economy Bill puts strict new record keeping requirements in place, which many smaller firms will not be able to meet. Needable individuals. I'm not going to keep mm. a log for my um, free Wi Fi. Yeah. So do you have open Wi-Fi then? Yep. Huh. Okay. Well, you will be responsible. Yeah. For well, actually, that happens on your connection as a result. I yep. mean, that equally means that we have trouble in Studio A or Studio B because you know you have to keep logs uh, of what of what's been used. Yeah. I have to keep logs of what you do on my Wi-Fi when you come to my house. Exactly. You don't. Do I you? would under. Yeah. Do you? Would under this. I record all the traffic. You don't. I do, do and then I analyse it for passwords. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. It's okay. the, the passwords I don't mind. It's things I look at. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you don't. No, do you? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> but under under the digital economy bill, that's the sort of thing that uh, that coffee shops and cafes and libraries or whatever would have to start to do. Mm. So it's a huge requirement, and basically they're, they're, they're worried that only big uh, institutions like the cloud you know, big providers will be able to meet the requirements i just thought of an application you could write an application that created fake logs and all it would do is just fill it up with facebook and <laughs> if the if the law came around and asked you for the log for you just generate a quick thing full of facebook log there you go everyone came in and visited facebook there's, a bit there's of my nonsense, isn't there, really? however I, i'm saying i don't agree with what they're doing I'm not sure that quite uh, matches the sort of principle <laughs> of what they're trying to achieve here. Uh, okay. Well, that's part of the problem. Maybe if you can do it that ri- quickly and you can, what the hell's the point? Quickly? Yeah, you can write it in quickly and everything. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Three Google executives have been sent down for six months by an Italian court for hosting a video showing a boy with Down syndrome being bullied. Uh, prosecutors claim that the video wasn't removed quickly enough in response to complaints. The executives were found guilty of invasion of privacy. Wasn't it taken down within hours? Uh, uh, well, the article says a couple of weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. Mm. And it was on Google Video, um, and there were complaints, and it didn't, didn't get down. Take didn't get taken down quickly enough. I thought it was a suspended sentence. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. so so no yeah. one's actually going to prison no, no, for no. it. No, no it's, it's, it's a conviction. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Commercial. If we're basically for working for someone, you're getting a criminal record. Yeah. Towards mm. being a boss. We have some events. We do. The first one is Maker Fair on Saturday and Sunday, the 13th and 14th of March in Newcastle. Not very far away, but we've only just heard about this one. Um, Maker Fair is a two-day family-friendly event that celebrates the do-it-yourself mindset. It's for creative, resourceful people of all ages and backgrounds who like to tinker and love to make things. We'll put a link in the show notes. Hmm. Looks like it could be fun. Yeah, great stuff. That Make have a, an excellent news feed, and they have some superb little kits and things and stuff that you can make. And you don't have to be you know, fantastic with a soldering iron. Mm. Well, really some of it's stuff. like um, crafty stuff, and some of it is um, you know, fabrics. and yeah. It's not all um, Arduinos and uh, soldering irons, like you say. I wonder if 
given that it's in Newcastle, they'll be using Linux Mint. I think everyone missed that. <laughs> Apart from you. Tumbleweed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the South East Linux Fest is on June the 11th, 12th and 13th. And we have a promo to play. Join us for the 2010 South East Linux Fest as we once again celebrate Linux and open source software in the GNU slash South. Due to the overwhelming response last year, this year's event will be bigger, better and longer. Self 2010 will take place Friday, June 11th through Sunday, June 13th at the Spartanburg Marriott at Renaissance Park in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Be there for UbuCon, Fedora Activity Day, BSDA Certification, Drupal Camp, multiple parties featuring Dual Core as well as the guys from Mystery Science Theater 3000 as Rift Tracks, and an even more expansive group of superb speakers, sponsors, and exhibitors. Self is free to attend, but hurry and register today to lock in the special discount room rate at the hotel. Register today at southeastlinuxfest.org. A quick update on Old Camp. Um, 1st and 2nd of May 2010 is going to be bigger and longer than last year. The venue is going to be the Black E in Liverpool. We've got a number of sponsors, which we can tell you about. We've got Linux Format, who are our media partner again. And in fact, if you look in the Linux Format April edition, we get a mention, which is quite cool. Nice little article, yeah. And yeah. they talked about us briefly last issue as well. Yeah, they did, yeah. They've been and really good. by next issue... And there'll be something extra in there too. Yes, and uh, they've also given us a really good offer. If you go to ogcamp.org, there's a really good subscription offer. Um, so while you're reading about the conference, you can get cheap subscription to Linux Format. Wicked. Silly not to. Uh, and we've also got sponsorship from the lovely people, the Allens at the Open Learning Centre, and Linux Emporium, Opsview, and Bitfolk. Magic. Yeah, they've all been really helpful and really great in brilliant. supporting us. Yes. And if any other companies or individuals would like to sponsor Old oh, Camp, give us prizes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, prizes from prizes the raffle. Good. Prizes or cold hard cash you know, <laughs> yeah. would be fine. Of course, uh, the night before, um, on the Friday night, there's the Rat Hole Roadshow, um, which is a special free culture gig. Um, is it in the same venue? No. Um, no, it's in another venue, the name of which escapes me temporarily. But it's in Liverpool. It's nearby. And it's being run by Dan from the Linux Outlaws. All the details are on the website. They are on the website. Yep. So it's a conference, but it's kind of an unconference or bar camp where we don't have a schedule beforehand uh, because we're that organised. And (laughs) the idea is, it's intentional, honest, you turn up on the day um, with some idea of, well, you don't have to give a talk, but if you've got a talk you want to give, we encourage you to to put it forward. And then we'll put together a schedule on Saturday morning, I think, and Mm -hmm. take it from there. And talks can be about anything. It doesn't have to be oh, hardcore yeah. geeky stuff. It can be anything mm. for free culture. Um, we had a lady who analysed pigs mm. last year, yes, which was really good. Um, and anything off the wall, a bit interesting, a bit different, would be really appreciated. Yeah, and we had a whole mixture of stuff last year, and I think very few were actually deep techy things. So mm. whatever you're interested in, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So <clears throat> and we of course need people to volunteer to be on the crew. Because mm-hmm. our fabulous crew last year just made the whole thing just perfect. Perfect, yeah. it really yeah, absolutely. was. Um, so if you want to be on the crew, you can email ogcamp at ubuntu-uk.org and we'll add you to the crew list. And Anna Anna B, who's going to be our head of crew for this year. Um, so she was helpful, very helpful last year and uh, is helping us out again. The hotels are uh, filling up. Apparently, it's a popular it's, weekend in it's Liverpool. It's a busy time in Liverpool that weekend. There's a whole list of hotels on the oddcamp.org website. There isn't an official, single official hotel, so go to look at the list on the website and find one that suits your pocket and uh, give them a ring. And if you sign up on the Facebook fan page, we can get an idea of who's planning to come along, which was quite useful last year for knowing who was going to turn up in the door. But you don't have to if you're not no. a Facebook no. fan, then don't worry about it. That's not a problem. Yeah. Um, and we currently have a, a raffle stash of prizes, which includes three, count them, three Viglan MPCLs, the never-ending Viglans. We just can't get enough of those small, small machines. Small, tiny little <laughs> boxes that do 400 megahertz. Yes. Um, from the lovely people at Viglan. From the lovely people at Viglan. And uh, we are planning to have mugs again. They were very popular last year. In fact, uh, uh, Simon's are drinking out of one right now. I would slurp, but it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a hint. Um... Yeah, so we're planning to have. Why did you look at Laura? I didn't when, when you said it's not Laura's a hint. tea girl. <laughs> right, I, okay. I, I didn't. Oh. And um, 
and uh, we're planning to have mugs and probably some other merchandise so if there's a particular things you'd like to see I don't know um, t-shirts aprons bandanas Remember uh, that it's a family show. <laughs> Whatever it <laughs> Did is. Did you say mankini? No, that was somebody else. Um, anyway, email in to uh, ogcamp at ubuntu-uk.org and uh, send us your suggestions. And don't forget to visit the site, ogcamp.org. Simon brings us Command 9. Love. It's back. Just a quick one this week. Um, using x Randa. Um one of the things you, I struggle to find, I've struggled to find in the last uh, couple of years, is the minimum, maximum resolutions and things that you can get out of your graphics card. Do you know I'm looking for this every day? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Sarcasm <a bit>. overload. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, anyway, using the command that's on the site, uh, you can check out the minimum, uh, current and maximum resolution possible with uh, Xorg. This wow. doesn't work with multiple monitors i tried it on uh, right. uh, at work today and it just gave you what it is currently set at but anyway have a go have a look see if you can use it it's interesting because it, on mine on my laptop i tried it and it told me the minimum was like 320 by 200 or something yep. and it told me the maximum was the resolution it was running at at the time 1024 by 600 yeah because it's got a, like a nine inch screen yeah but then after that it said maximum 4096 by 4096 which i think yes. is a limit of the driver or the car uh, or something, right, isn't okay. it? that's yeah, exactly my, the point It'll tell you the absolute, absolute minimum and absolute maximum it can possibly do, even if the you know the colours are way down. So that's pretty impressive. I've yeah. done a little EP. Yeah. The only the only um, flaw in the plan is it doesn't work with your use, if you're using the binary NVIDIA driver. Sadly, well, well that, you that would teach you. Software. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Should use Nouveau. Shouldn't that will learn you. Yes. Well, I don't on this laptop, so that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Saying if you did, you know. Well, that right. that X Rander is is an amazing tool, really, and you know. I think people should look at the other options it does as well. It's it can sort of rotate displays and things as well, can't mm, it? Yeah, yeah. Funky. Okay. Hopefully, at the time that this podcast goes out, an announcement has been made. Otherwise, Ooh. oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we may have scooped it. Um, and um, what it's to do with? Well, me and Davey will talk about it because Tony, Laura, and Simon don't know what we're about to show them no, we're in the dark um, and so what we'll do is we'll talk about it while they open it now we've got a little pdf for them to open if they open okay. it have a look at it it's like christmas so dave <laughs> you were in london today yes i was canonical and um this was all to do with what you the ubuntu uh, artwork and sort of whole image has been going for about six years now it's go, gone through various phases um what they're doing now is basically trying to re-identify the brand and bring it all a bit a bit together. Uh, so I went up to, um, to the offices today, and they took us through their development process from from the word go to what they're doing, and how each part has changed. Now I don't come from a artistic background or or, or a design. I mean, often I can see um, when people have come out with new images, things like that, and I think, oh, okay, well they've done that. That might have taken a week or so. But the meticulous detail they, they've put in through these iterations, I'm thinking, wow, you know, they, they really have been working hard. Okay, let's take a step back and look at what they've done. So <laughs> so what exactly is it? It's, it's logo? Okay. It's Oh, it's, it's, it's everything. Um, okay, so one of the major colours in Ubuntu at the moment is brown. The, no, the, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, over the last uh, couple of releases or so, we've started seeing it go a little bit lighter. A bit mm. orangier. Yeah, mm. we're now, we're now, now, now brown's been dropped. So we're looking at orange, uh. and a hint of purple, and some Ooh. elements of grey coming in as well. Ooh. So that's, that, that, that's quite, oh, I say purple, but... There, it's there's, aubergine. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No, the, right. the, it's these designer types. <laughs> <laughs> of which we are not. Mm. Yeah, so um, it was... Uh, and they're also making their own font as well. You know? mm. so, so basically wow. yeah, a whole font is being developed so just for this. So there's a, a logo change, colour change, and a font change. Yes, yes. And how far are they through that process? <laughs> um, at time of speaking, um, I think they've probably got about 15 letters of the alphabet or so. <laughs> <laughs> of the English alphabet. Yes, yeah. Uh, so so, so they, are, they are working really hard. And I mean, 
One it's of, not easy to design a font, is it? It's no, really sure. hard no. job. Well, no, the thing is, uh, we were looking at the different uh, proof prints for each model and things like that. And it was even the, the C in the letter. They were trying to decide how to end it. Should it be sharp or mm. should it be slightly angled? And there was, you know, the, the amount of options they were putting into that was... Yeah, it, it's yeah. not something you just like scribble on the back of a cigarette packet and go, right, there's my font. Although there <laughs> probably is a font that looks like it's been scribbled, scribbled on the back of a <laughs> It took weeks to design. Yeah. Now, actually, uh, one of the other things we saw was the example desktop as well. And uh, if you, if chaps in the studio, uh, if you just want to have a look and at Laura. that now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, I've not seen this yet, so we're just going to have a little look at the, uh, there's a PDF document. The first page is quite purple <laughs> with orange and white. Oh, wow. <sighs> Ooh, so actually, so in, actually, so, sorry, Simon, if you just scroll, scroll back to the first page. Yeah. Now, this doesn't you, do you, good you, podcast. Yeah, I know, talking. I know. Simon, <laughs> can yep. you just read out what, uh, what it actually says there? It says, uh, Ubuntu embodies freedom and is collaborative, precise, and reliable. This branding work celebrates who we are, where we've been, and where we are heading. Yeah. Hmm. Now, the, the actual words there, uh, there's been tremendous detail uh, from them words. They, they, they've thought about what them words actually mean and trying to sort of summarise in their own minds what them words Not a mission mean. statement. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, it is. Well, no, actually, in the office, what they had is for each one of them words, um, the, uh, the, the, the freedom, the collaborative, precise and reliable, they had a, a sheet of large paper and they had pictures what they thought summarised each of them. So um, reliable is like a car. And but they actually had a Saab. Not my car. And I thought, okay. I thought, is that like the most reliable car that they could okay. come up with? <laughs> so, so they've obviously spent anyway. a lot of time on this. Oh, yeah. um, about about eight it, months, actually. And it's very so obvious they've, they've got professionals. This isn't just a bunch yeah. of um, bored geeks sat in a room having a go. This is, um, this is all good professional stuff. So yeah. the, the, the first thing after the splash page is the new Ubuntu logo. Oh. So we're sitting here looking at it. And what do you think, Tony? What it's, does it look like? It is uh, orange background, white text. Um, the uh, traditional sort of three people holding hands uh, symbol circle is still... Of friends. Circle of friends. That's what it's called, isn't it? Right? I should probably know that. Um, it's, st <laughs> it's still there, but it's now all one colour. Mm -hmm. So the three different colours have gone. Um, so it's the circle in orange on a white background. The circle of friends in orange on a white background. Uh, and a, a white Ubuntu text. It's difficult to describe a font on a podcast, but it well, looks very... Well, the good thing is that we're going to put this podcast out after it's been announced. So, so everyone should be able to see, see this. But it looks very clean. Um, and it's not a very fancy font. There aren't sort of little bits sticking off all over the place. <laughs> oh, sorry. What, one, of, sorry. <laughs> what, what, one, one of the things they try to really um, address with this one is the traditional Ubuntu title font, which we've currently got, um, has mm. an almost childlike aspect. Yeah. So yeah. it's trying to make it all a bit cleaner and a bit more professional. Yeah, I think, I think they've done that, yeah. 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 With the letters they've done so far, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is U B N T U. What, what the uh, U twice? The actual project manager of the design team came rushing back in the office and said, "We've got an M." Like, you know, <laughs> got another letter. <laughs> yes. <I've> given birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was quite good. Now, actually, if you go um, back to, we've also got some screenshots as well. So I'm really interested to see what your reactions are to this. Oh, okay. So there's oh. a there's a dark screenshot and a, a light screenshot. Ooh. And they've got a kind of the aubergine background. It's purple desktop. It's aubergine. Now, obviously, this is still work in progress. But yes. It, yeah. Okay. Wow. It's purple. Is it that different? Really? The, at the moment, in this screenshot, which is, as Dave says, is a work in progress, the icons and things are the same as far as I can see. Yeah. Um, there's a different wallpaper. We tend to get new wallpapers every so often anyway. Mm. Um it's not hugely different. Now, I actually really felt... Some of the window decorations are different. I, I actually really felt OS X here. I, I really did. I thought, wow, this is... Which one? The light or the dark? Um, a mixture of both. If you had halfway in between them. Well, yeah, I mean, OS X has a light-coloured thing at the top and all the the stuff is grey. And we were halfway there with uh, with Karmic. So, yeah that, that's, yeah, that's to be expected. So, you know, generally looks quite good looks yeah. fresh yeah and as one of the things that dave's linked us to is a sort of sample version of an ubuntu page on the website and that again looks very different uh, a lot more white i guess a more white <laughs> space on on the page yeah now, i think some of the pages we've had in the past have been a bit busy so yeah it does look a bit now, actually here, if you scroll to the very bottom of that site you'll you'll, you'll notice there's um a sort Ooh. of pinpricks do, do you see them at the very bottom 
Yes, now, was, and they're on the PDF as well. Yeah. Now, that's something that's being introduced to be... Um, if you have them on a, on, a, on a page, then it's more developer, more geeky face, more geeky base, because it's like um, technical right. drawing paper. You know, okay. That's the sort of thing right. they're trying to bring like out. A grid. So, yeah. yeah. So if it's if it's in depth and geeky, then there'll be some of that. All oh, right. So but if it's for general consumers, there won't be that. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the sort of thing they're thinking. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of um, symbols and things. There's like a fish in a fish bowl, a little bird, um, a bloke wearing glasses, and a brain. Yeah. What's all that about? <laughs> okay. Well, these are sort of icons that um, that are being pulled out to try and. Uh, to allow to be reused um, for symbolising different things. Like, I'm not sure about what the fishbowl is, but I mean, the far, far, one on the far right is based on sort of the micro uh, blogging bird. Oh, the Twitter bird, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, and, and some of the other ones, I mean, it's basically icons for, for different use, and they, they, they might bring them into the desktop eventually. Okay. So, um, how are, I mean, if this is going to be changing the desktop and changing the website and. Um, lots of other bits and bobs that go with Ubuntu, like, you know, T-shirts and brands all over the place. How's that going to affect Loco teams who've got their own brand on their, the, the usual Ubuntu logo on theirs? Mm. How's it going to affect um, derivative distros and all these other people who depend or feed off of the Ubuntu stock stuff? Yeah, uh, it, it's still going to be using the existing trademark policy. Yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily thinking about trademarks, but just, like just in got, general. But Simon's they're... got a jumper he'll need to replace now, for example. People <laughs> well, have no, got actually, business cards printed I, up with it on. And... I think the new fresh stuff is, is great and it shows that, um, you know, where it's all going. But this is the legacy. This is where it came yeah. from. So mm. in actual fact, it's, you might see people, retro. you know, doing the retro. Classic. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't think this stuff is going to go yeah, away. But also, the design team's been very careful not to throw things away. So, for example, the the, uh, the Ubuntu Circle of Friends is still there, mm. you know. So they've yes. been very careful to keep things, you know, and, and not the key totally, elements. Like, yeah. yeah, it's quite interesting. Even just having seen this for about sort of five ten minutes while we've been talking and looking at Simon's sweatshirt, which has got the old Circle of Friends on, I'm thinking the, that that the old one looks much more sort of childish, almost you know, sort of bright and colourful. Yep. I can see what they've done, and they've gone for a more mature look in the yeah, new yeah, one, and it's worked, serious. I think. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 So this is going to be announced on Wednesday, hopefully yeah. about the same time as this podcast comes out, <laughs> if we edit it right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and we, we press the go button at the right time. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to get some feedback yeah. from our listeners as to what they think about it. Send us your views to podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. It's time for the bit about Ubuntu. Gerald. <laughs> and the first thing in, in the bit about Ubuntu this week is Full Circle Magazine, the unofficial community maintained magazine for Ubuntu, have relaunched their own branded podcast. After an aborted attempt a couple of years ago, the team have regrouped and put out their first episode. Mm. And has anybody listened to it? I yes. have. Yes. Okay. And it was good. Yeah, it's a kind of mix of um, UUPC and um, Tux Radar, I would say. Okay. I've not listened to Tux Radar, but that's the Linux format. Yeah, podcast isn't it? Yeah, and that's pretty good as well, actually. But they're they're all UK based, aren't they? Yes, yes. and they uh, are sort of distribute recording and stuff, don't they? Yeah, yeah they're right? using yeah. Uh, the Big Bad Skype. Ah, right, okay. But um, yeah, it's good actually. For uh, for a first episode, I actually thought it was remarkable. Actually, I, I thought I was going to say that, but I didn't. You know, it's kind of patronising. Well, we're very experienced. for a first episode. No, 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 no. Very what good I mean is, what I mean well is, well done. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> with our with our first episode, I don't think it was shockingly bad. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I it think was. it's certainly worth checking out. I, I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's wrong with it? Yeah. You started on my editing. <laughs> No, <laughs> two seasons later. <laughs> no, it was good. It was worth listening to, and they had um, areas of expertise. They had segments. They had nice little beds of music. They had intro, outro, and all that kind of stuff. It was, it was nicely put together. And they've also got two gamers as well. I understand. Um, so, I mean, that's an aspect we don't really cover because none of us are really into games. <laughs> yes, if you're into gaming, listen to them. If you're not, listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the, the difference is that they're using Skype, and uh, some may think, "Oh, Skype." But audio call to be terrible and it's not spectacular but the good thing that um i took from it is that actually the audio quality isn't that important there's loads of good content and it yeah. was interesting mm. and um you know more variety for uh, linux users out there to listen to I don't, I don't think necessarily skype is the thing that makes the audio quality bad i think often it's the hardware people have if they've got a cheap headset or sure. something you know that 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 is probably contributes more 
than the fact they're remote. I think the 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 dynamicness and the immediacy of you know not being able to look someone in the face while you're talking to them. Yeah, sure. Well, as we found more. out, people will listen to anything. Well, <laughs> there is that. Yeah, I'm sure. I, you know, and it's a good podcast, so yeah, yeah. worth a listen. Yeah, I'll have to give it a go. Lucid, the next Ubuntu release that's due out in April, is uh, it just released Alpha 3. Mm. Anything good in it? Yeah, it's all right. You know. You're both running it, aren't you? Three yeah. Of you? Yeah. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got it on, uh, well, this USB stick and uh, another that's laptop. Tim yes, uh, Geekbox, Timbox Buntu, and a desktop and a laptop. So, yeah, that's all right. Fold any bugs? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a few. Yeah. There's one I haven't filed yet. My battery indicator on the laptop, um, it moves to the left. <laughs> well, the actual indicator yeah, yeah, yeah. actually yeah, slides yeah, across the yeah, screen. Yeah, it moves and slowly. It goes off, then it comes back on, and it's moved one pixel to the left. Does oh, it, hang on, hang on. It goes you, off, then it goes on. It's crashing and restarting. Hang on. If you right-click on it and select "Don't do silly things," yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll stop doing that. That's not an no, he's got it. He's got to edit the etc conf. <laughs> yeah, no, the G conf. Don't, don't do silly it. things yeah. equals one. Yeah. <laughs> if it keeps going, does it go off the side of the screen and then it come pushes, back on the other side? No, but it pushes everything off. Does it all fall off the side of the screen and tumble on the floor? But I. I think, the I, think, I think the main thing I've seen for Alpha 3 is uh, is the boot speed. It's crazy fast. Mm. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, You're wrong. <laughs> I had uh, uh, Karmic on this uh, before, and it was it booted in 21 seconds and it shut down in 6. And now it takes about a minute both ways. Well, well it, then that's just your fault. I mean, <laughs> I mean what, everyone what else card, in the world. <laughs> video. <laughs> That's why, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rip it out! Yes. Throw it away! Issue number one of Ubuntu User magazine has been made available as a free download. Yeah, that's rather good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Given, given how expensive it is Yeah, but also given that's, that's what, at least six months old now, isn't it? Yeah, but it's still got articles and oh, yeah. you know, stuff. It's, yeah. It's content. It, it, the uh, the page says it, it flew off the newsstands in spring 2009, so it's probably getting on for a year old. But anyway, you know, it's free. Have a look. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was okay. You know, I just don't think it was worth seven quid. Was it, yeah, we were no, saying at the time it was, ooh, that's expensive. Yeah. And that's all in the bit about Ubuntu this time. It's time for your feedback. Yeah, we asked for your feedback last episode and we have got... Oh, boy, a, did we get it. <laughs> got a boatload. We obviously we had, said something very wrong. We had to set up a whole new wiki to put it on. Yes, a whole new thing. Um, so, the first one that came in was from Zach, who left a comment on the site saying... I've been missing the podcast and I thought I'd check and you just did one. Excellent, thanks. <laughs> Short but sweet. Thanks for that, That's Zach. Uh, Josh commented and said, Nice job on the first episode of the season. I'm extremely excited about the new Ubuntu One Music Store coming in Lucid. Can you guys talk about that in the next episode? Oh, I think we can manage <laughs> that. We could try. I'd like to know uh, what you think uh, that the store will look like. Will it be an Amazon storefront e-music? Well, we've uh, answered uh, that as well. Yep, yeah. we've done that. <laughs> Uh, also, I'm a noob. I've uh, used several Ubuntu distros, Eft, Fawn, Gibbon, Koala. <laughs> Gibbon. <laughs> I've never heard them but, uh, <laughs> referred to like that. <laughs> but I've never upgraded from one release to another. I've made some modifications to my system. Just wanted to, uh, your thoughts on tips, tricks when upgrading to a new release to minimize the impacts. Read the documentation. Do <laughs> <laughs> is that that's very close to RTFM, RTFM isn't it? Yeah, I've got a well, that that's the right Love answer. It. Read the upgrade manual because it tells you what will break. And if I just say press the upgrade button and it breaks, then you'll complain. So read the manual because it tells you what breaks. And we'll probably discuss it after Karmic comes out anyway. So yeah, that was six months Lucid ago. Comes out yeah. Yeah. Lucid even. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss it six months ago. But basically, it should be all right. Basically, that, 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 that's Just a Tony guarantee. Button. Yeah, that's a Tony certified guarantee. <laughs> it will be all right. Josh, it will be all right. You'll be fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Right. Email uh, Alan. A friend of the show and Twittering House owner Andy Stanford Clark wrote in to say Hi, folks. Great to have you back in another season. We've missed you. Oh. Listening to the Read Write Web Facebook segment and hearing the four of you stumbling around the basic concepts of usability and trying to reinvent the well-known best practices for user-centric design on the fly, I couldn't help but thinking it was a pity there wasn't a professional user experience person sitting nearby that you could have pulled interview interview about it to get more definitive view on how user interaction and design can be made in a way that makes applications usable by people with a range of application skills and goals. Oh, yes, there was. That would be you, wouldn't it, Laura? Maybe. Well, I think we might need to review the friend of the show bit. Yeah. <laughs> person who sticks the boot in on th- of the show. To be fair, 
to be fair, yes, we should have had Laura in that, but the goal of that th- the, that segment never intended being what it turned into. It was it was never intended to be that. So yeah, sorry. sorry. You don't care. Do you? <laughs> you just wait till the microphone's off, and then have a go at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Stuart Language, who we just interviewed, uh, posted a link to the MSDN blog about why Windows doesn't have an expert mode. Yeah, this was why we, we were all talking about beginner mode, expert mode. And oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. It's quite a nice short blog post, and there's lots of comments after it, but he sums it up quite pithily. Uh, we can stick a link in there for show notes. Mm. Excellent. Basically, he says it doesn't work, and it's stupid. <laughs> Colin Mills emailed in to tell us, I'm 65 and have been using Ubuntu since the days of Dapper Drake, and there's no such thing as the average user. I disagree. But go on. Windows <laughs> users... <laughs> thanks. Windows users don't try Linux for a number of reasons. The myths include, I don't want to use an application where I have to run everything in text mode. It's free, so it can't be any good, and it doesn't look like Windows. We need to encourage schools to use open source technology, since one, once users have been introduced to Windows, there seems to be a general inertia and lack of interest in trying any alternative. If we want to make Linux mainstream, we need to make sure that schools are aware of the cost benefits of switching to open source, so that people grow up being aware that there are alternatives out there. I think his, there's no such thing as average user. The Read Write Web Facebook thing clearly shows there is. There is a huge number of people who are the same kind of people so we're who talking use about the you know who who are the non-technical non you know not expert users and because there's a huge number of them that makes them the average you're talking of the modal average rather than yes. median or anything make, yes. make careful when you get down off that soapbox it's a long way down <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a horse you're on <laughs> it's very high isn't it you'll need oxygen horse. up there <laughs> i'll calm down <laughs> It's actually right about the schools bit. Um, yeah. my, both my kids use Ubuntu. Um, I don't know how I'd get them to push it to their mates, though, apart from giving them a stack of discs to hand out. But certainly my kids think it's fantastic and tell everybody so when their mates come around, they'll see it and they use it as well. So He also has a valid point about the inertia and, and people recommending Windows to other people. Like, my mum's never had a computer before. And I was looking at setting a computer up and my brother and sister both said to her, don't let Alan talk you into using Ubuntu. Nice. You should use Windows. And the re- the reason they said it is because that my brother and sister could both support her. Now, despite the fact that neither of them work in IT, both of them have Windows machines that have been compromised by viruses recently. And you and, fix them. And I fix them. They think they're the best suited people to give my mum advice on how to run a Windows PC. Yeah, but also, <laughs> also Microsoft's doing the big advertising thing, which they've never really done the same before. I mean, tonight we've seen two Windows 7s advert. Windows 7 adverts, yeah. and we never watch live TV normally. And oh. I heard on Radio 1 on the way over here um, that Internet Explorer 8 is the best browser available <gasps> by far. Really? Yeah. Well, is this part of that browser choice thing? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Gosh. Oh, it's in stitches. It's so funny. <laughs> Russ Axford from Somerset emailed in a suggestion to improve the experience for new users. He writes The challenged Facebook users are potential Ubuntu users, even. The target audience. Yes! (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) When they buy their Windows boxes, they have a quick start guide with more help once they have set up the computer. Why don't we do the same with Ubuntu? A quick start guide, which we users can print off and give a disk to a Windows user. Also a PDF file on the desktop once the live disk has been loaded or Ubuntu installed. This would be a simply worded guide to installing extra software. Explain which program to use for, for various tasks, how to set up a printer, scan a webcam, etc. I'm thinking of something professionally produced, not the amateurish <laughs> stuff that the community <laughs> think which I might be capable of. Oh, so he's saying not the amateurish thing that he would, that he, he he would, would be capable of. <laughs> not the amateurish. <laughs> well, the Ubuntu <laughs> manual. That's precisely yeah. what the goal is of the Ubuntu mm. manual project. It's to create a document you can print off or have as a PDF as a, a beginner's guide. Yeah, absolutely. Andy Piper mentioned something similar, but it was about a video like you get at the start of a Windows installation, I think. That nobody watches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the wiki tried to first try and achieve this. and uh, I think it's been excellent building blocks. But, I mean, this uh, manual project, I mean, we should really interview the chat behind that. Mm. Good idea. We had this voicemail from Brian. Hi, this is Brian in West Yorkshire. One way of solving the dilemma of what programs should be included in a distro would be to, during install, ask users to select basic, advanced, or custom. 
Then present the same page to everyone, but with different boxes being checked, and a good description of what each app can do, as for many, the names of the apps presented will be unfamiliar. Another approach might be to ask a user what they wanted out of the distro, then go from there, perhaps downloading and installing some apps live off the net. Well, it's interesting, but that kind of goes back to the post that Stuart gave us about the advanced button thing. But we do kind of already have that. On the alternate CD, you have... Um task cell that's, that's what i was going to say yeah we've yeah. got the options of you um ubuntu cloud and um oh, myth ubuntu it. backend myth ubuntu frat that's yeah, a different yeah, so target audience though. oh yes definitely no, no, you know but the idea behind having a a, a a button you press that says i'm going to do media stuff on actually here, mm-hmm. and bing you get the right packages. something which has been successful in that particularly is the lamp one that installs you mm-hmm. know t- installs linux apache mysql and php just being able to ins- do, install one thing and just get the whole thing through a a semi-graphical option i know people have actually quite liked mm. and that's good if you know what all the options are and you know that you want a subset of them i think the difference is when you've got somebody just wanting the internet and msn messaging then mm. they don't yeah. care what the hole is they just want to get on with it yeah. Maybe um, we should have a setup where you get like nothing, you know, you get like a browser, and as soon as you try and open a dot doc, it goes, Oh, you need open office, and then goes and goes and gets it and installs it. And, mm. and when you need, when you try and open a Visio document, it installs Windows. Or- <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I just like the, remember the old, the first EPC UI? The Xandros one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we had sort of big, big square buttons. buttons and yeah. things. I thought that was brilliant. I loved it. It's fantastic. I know loads of uh, well, I didn't like I it. I know people did. Well, yeah, but that's because you're a geek. fussy geeks. Yeah, yeah, fussy geeks. I thought, I thought it was, it was brilliant. Just for you all, it just had like messaging, yeah. internet, email. I used to go down to the local curry house, and while I'm waiting for my curry, I'd sit there with my EPC and sit on their free Wi-Fi. You brilliant. must look really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Henson Sturgill wrote in to say. I work in a computer repair for a large company and you've no idea how right on your read-write web story was. I think the default version of Ubuntu should have a default resolution of 800 by 600 because some folks don't understand why the internet no longer takes up the entire screen at higher resolutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only have four large icons, which would be a wireless wizard that would guide them through connection to Wi-Fi, Chrome browser with pre-installed most visited thumbnails for Facebook, MySpace, etc. Abbey Word, since most people don't use the presentations and spreadsheets features of OR. And some music player with built-in store. Ubuntu officially has one, right? Yes, it does, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I left out email client because most people don't know what pop or IMAP server is mm. and just check mail over HTTP. Yeah. See, the problem with these, any mail or any comment that I see that says, most people do this or most people are like this. The your is... is I do that. Yeah, exactly. Actually, or, or someone I know does that. In or, his experience, he's a computer repair saying, guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. But the the problem is that, and he has a perception of it, and it may well be right. And you know, I agree with him largely. But equally, you'll you'll get a reply from someone who says, "But I need Inkscape. I must have Inkscape." Or you know, must Ubuntu is no good if it hasn't got the GIMP installed. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, but as we all know, it's just an app to get away. Absolutely. Yeah. Or if you double clicked on a thing and it went and auto did it, that would be lovely. Mm. It's known as progressive disclosure. And uh, Ooh. Ooh. technical term. Henson also adds. Oh, he does. He adds, I think Google was genius merging the search and address bar into a single bar. This is on Chrome or Chromium, I guess. Which Firefox, Firefox already did. Yeah. yeah, Isn't that the awesome bar or yeah. something? Hmm. Awesome. Although arguably they all do it because Internet Explorer, if you didn't, if you type something in Internet Explorer 6, it would it goes it, to MSN would, if you can't find it. It will take you to their own depends, provider, yeah. Depends. Um, my provider at home is Virgin, and depending on how I do it, it goes to the Virgin search engine. Nice. So, uh, yeah, they, really? they, 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 they mangle wow. your DNS. Yeah, things, yeah. don't they? Um, DNS manglers. Yeah. Google DNS for the win. <laughs> Aldo Noguera left a comment on the site. Maybe the I just want to log into Facebook effect has something to do with the Firefox's awesome bar. When you type in a word, it goes to the first link in a Google search for that word. Actually, I couldn't figure out exactly what the algorithm is, but it seems to do this sometimes. It's just awesome. It is awesome. Although, how many of us actually still use Firefox? I do. I Occasionally. Do? Yeah, I do. Occasionally. I do. Yeah, it's just do you use Chromium now? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Cool. Finally, Patrick Archibald tweeted... Looking forward to the new episode. Feel free to plug 
ogcasts.com if you like it. Lists, dents and feeds from ogcasts. Yeah, it's quite cool. It's it's a very simple site and it just lists a bunch of um, podcasts or ogcasts or whatever you want to call them down the left-hand side. And when you click on one of them, it shows you all the dents on the right-hand side that mention that podcast. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so we could use that when we're recording to find out what the feedback is. That's like, um, we could, yeah. And it looks like there are about 10 it's like a mini Old planet. Casts yeah. on the on side of which we're one. Yeah, we're the bottom one, so we need to change yeah. our name to AAA Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did we cast. submit to that, or did that just... No, they, they did it off their own back. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it was Patrick thank himself, actually, I think, who did it. Thank you, Patrick. Hold well on. And that's all your feedback. And that's the end of the show. That was rather fast. That was... Yeah. That, that is record time. <laughs> what was that, two hours? Two and a little bit hours, Impressive. yeah. It's all the sugary drinks. It's the that sugary Alex drinks been and drinking. the chocolate. Yeah. Nom, yeah. Nom, nom, nom. Right, ready to do another episode. Come on, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> no, leave my house now. <laughs> uh, we're not going to read out all the ways you can get in touch. You can find that those out those out from our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org, including our voicemail numbers and Twitter feeds. Yeah. See you on the next show. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.